fall constellations Pegasus and Andromeda overlap in the sky, and in their mythology too. This area is full of interesting targets for amateur astronomers, and together the two constellations create a powerful landmark for finding your way around. Those of you with go-to telescopes will gain some alignment stars too. This is Touring the Night Sky with Zachary Singer. The stories of Pegasus and Andromeda aren't just history. They're a way to remember these constellations and a guide to what to look for at night. The short version is that Andromeda was an ancient princess who angered the gods. She was condemned to die as a sacrifice to a giant sea monster. Just before she met her end, she was rescued by the great hero Perseus as he rode his winged horse, Pegasus. If we imagine this horse, with Andromeda hanging on for dear life, the star patterns in the constellations will make more sense. Let's look for Pegasus first, as its shape makes a great landmark. Pegasus is almost directly overhead at 9 p.m. in late October and early November. Four fairly bright stars known as the Great Square of Pegasus are the key to recognizing this constellation. Find this easy shape first, and you've got the rest of Pegasus, and Andromeda, for free. In mid-fall, the Great Square is just about straight up at 9 p.m. Look southward to start, then shift your gaze upwards about 75 degrees. The square's four edges align reasonably well along north-south and east-west lines, and each corner is roughly 14 degrees from the other, a little over a fist width when your arm is outstretched in front of you. Now we'll use the great square to find the rest of Pegasus. Ordinarily, we look towards the south to match constellations to what we see on star charts. But Pegasus and Andromeda will be easier to recognize if we face north when we look for them. If we turn in this way, we can imagine the great square as the body of the winged horse, Pegasus. Now, here's his head and neck, with his nose at left, and down here, his galloping front legs. It's not the whole horse, but it is evocative of one. Let's spin back around to the south and see how this looks. It's a little crazy upside down, but it works, especially since you'll use the great square to get started. Once you get used to seeing Pegasus this way, Andromeda is easy too. Starting at the great square, move from southwest to northeast, or as we see here, from bottom right to top left, when the great square is highest in the sky. If we keep going in the same direction for almost the same distance, we come to the midpoint of a curving line in, you guessed it, Andromeda. This star, Mirac, is an important landmark, as we'll see in a moment, but let's finish Andromeda's outline first. See how the stars curve around from Pegasus to Mirac? Keep going, again for almost the same distance, and you get to Almac, the end of the main curve in Andromeda. This star, by the way, is a really beautiful blue and orange double star in a telescope. On some charts, though, it's shown as Gamma Andromeda. Whatever you call it, it's one of my favorites. If you look closely, you'll see a second curve in Andromeda, closely echoing the arc of the one we just found. Together, these make up the most noticeable stars in the constellation. They form a widening figure that is supposed to be the Princess Andromeda in her flowing gown. Remember, she was hanging on to Pegasus after the flying horse rescued her, though that story will make more sense when we look at it turned around again. Ah, there she is. Pegasus and Andromeda cover a broad sweep of more than 60 degrees across, or about a third of the night sky that's currently visible. That means it can serve as a jumping-off point for other, harder-to-find constellations like Aries or Perseus. The latter is ironically the hero in Andromeda's rescue. There are also two alignment stars in the Great Square, and you're already acquainted with them. One is Markab, and the other is Alpharats. These are the very same stars we used to find Andromeda. This area also contains some amazing objects. One of the finest is the Andromeda Galaxy, also known as Messier 31, or just simply M31. This huge spiral galaxy is visible to the naked eye under a dark country sky, and with a pair of binoculars under urban light pollution, if you know where to look. On a moonless night in the country, even a small telescope will give you a stupendous view. 
The galaxy looks somewhat like our own Milky Way, if we could see our galaxy from the outside. In a telescope, you can also see M31's satellite galaxies M32 and M110. All three galaxies are about 2.5 million light years away from us. That means the light we see is actually how this galaxy looked 2.5 million years ago. In theory, if aliens there could look back at us in high detail, the light they'd receive would show them our ancient hominid ancestors walking around on the African savanna, long before modern history or mankind as we now know it. We are seeing the Andromeda galaxy that far back in its past. To find M31, start at the Great Square, run across the diagonal from Markab to Alpharats like we did earlier, and stop at Mirac like before. This time, make a 90 degree turn towards a smaller curve and pause at the first reasonably bright star there. Notice the distance we just covered from the big curve in Andromeda to the small one and make another jump at the same distance and in the same direction. If you're under a clear dark sky, you should see a thumb-sized oval patch of hazy light, the Andromeda galaxy. By the way, it often works better if you look for dim objects like this with averted vision. That is, avoid looking directly at it and cast your glance slightly to the side. On the other side of our two constellations lies the showpiece globular cluster M15, a sphere of about 100,000 stars just ahead of the nose of Pegasus. We usually find globular clusters lying close to our galaxy's center, so they're mostly summer objects. That makes this bright globular a real treat, and it'll be observable into December. If you want to point your telescope to M15, a good star chart will be a big help. The general idea is to find the great square, travel along the horse's neck, and pause here, where his neck and head meet. Now, find the horse's nose, and continue onward for about half of this distance. You'll see M15 glowing dimly in your telescope's magnifying finder, allowing you to center it in the telescope itself. You'll also see it as a fuzzy round patch of light in binoculars. There are many more things to see in Pegasus and Andromeda, like nebulae and faraway galaxies. Neighboring constellations have even more objects. You can look for those when you're ready, using Pegasus and Andromeda as a starting point. So getting familiar with this part of the sky will lead you to some grand adventures in the stars. Clear skies, my friends.